Welcome to Aspiring Hollywood, where each week we bring to you inspirational and motivational interviews with hardworking industry professionals. This week, I traveled to Chicago to meet up with a very dedicated television producer who specializes in producing television programming for the ethnic community. This is important to know because there's so many ways to get real working experience and break into the business by tapping into areas most people would not be interested in. For the last 17 years, my next guest, an old friend, Petru Amare, I call him Peter, has been producing Romanian Christian programming in the Chicago area and most recently worldwide for a market that would otherwise be forgotten. Peter, welcome to Aspiring Hollywood. Thank you for having me, Luciano. I'm thrilled to have you on the show, Peter. And it's also important to know that Peter and I started in the business together producing these shows. I went on to produce features and Peter stayed on course, nurturing and growing the audience of Romanian Television Network. Tell me about what is, I mean, I know what it is, but the audience doesn't know. What is Romanian Television Network? It's an ethnic television channel and also a production studio in the mm -hmm. Chicagoland area, focusing on producing Romanian Christian programming. Our vision was from the beginning to communicate a message to the Romanian speaking population especially uh, regarding the needs for spiritual growth and development. We all run to take care of our careers, to have a nice uh, job, to have uh, the material uh, things that we all need, which is normal and acceptable, but we always or somehow neglect or forget the need to nourish the spiritual needs. So we wanted through this programming to encourage the people to think about their spiritual needs as much as they do for their material uh, needs. Now, Peter, this is a very honorable thing to do, right? It's, it's, it's very uh, socially viable, I guess. Um, my question to you, though, is why? Why did you decide to do this? This very specialized television programming. I mean, your, your audience is probably getting narrower when you do ethnic programming, and then your audience gets even narrower when you do ethnic Christian programming. Honestly, it was a calling from God. That's what I like to tell the people. I was not looking to do uh, television. I was not uh, familiar with the television industry at all. Mm -hmm. But when this opportunity came about and you had a big uh, mm -hmm. role in it, uh, I really uh, felt that God is calling me to use this medium, the television, and media in general, and the internet, to communicate the message of hope and salvation through Jesus Christ. Okay, so um, what Aspiring Hollywood is about is, is focusing on trying to bring informational and motivational uh, messages um, to, uh, to the aspiring film community, to the up-and-coming film producers, directors, actors, screenwriters, and so forth. And a lot of times, um, people that are not familiar with the industry aspire to be, uh, to, to, to write, to produce, and so forth, but they just don't have the means. They don't have the, the knowledge or the experience or the connections to, to get into the business. Right. So then would you say that what you're doing would be a good way of getting experience in, in working the camera, working behind the camera and perhaps in front of the camera? I think that everyone that wants to tap into this industry, they should really question their motivations, their vision and their commitment. It is very difficult to penetrate this industry. And if you're not committed, if you don't have a clear vision and if you're not passionate about what you're doing, it's very difficult uh, to do it even in, in an ethnic uh, television channel. But I would encourage anyone who is interested and who feels like he's called to get involved in this or has a vision or a passion to question their motivation. If it's purely fame and money, they, they should really uh, think twice because they'll be disappointed. It's a long way and you know that better than, than, uh, than me. Uh, to, to reach that level of uh, 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 glitz and glamour, as they say. Right, and, and, and I agree with you. Um, 
the thing is that passion is very important to have, right? But you can have all the passion in the world. If you don't have the financial backing, then it's a lot more difficult. I mean, that's not to say that, that you can't do it. You can, because we had previous guests on the show that, that uh, produce uh, uh, you know, short films and so forth for $1,800, for example, let's say, you know, or $2,000. So it's possible to do it, but how do you finance your shows? I mean, this is what the audience is probably interested in, in knowing how do you finance, how do you keep it going? And you've done it for the last 17 years. Well, I think it's important to say that I have a very rich partner. And you always have to have a partner behind you. It's either a partner that has the money in the bank or a partner that you trust that has the money unlimited. In my case, I started with zero budget, with no experience in, in this industry whatsoever. And I had a, a, a trust in a partner that I call God uh, that was very faithful to me. He didn't give me $100,000 uh, up front. He didn't make any promises, but he always made sure that I have enough to cover my next production, my next project. And uh, now to be able to say that from a half an hour TV production that we started 17 years ago to broadcast 24 seven and have a committed, dedicated 24 hour television channel is really something that even amazes me. And I can't take the credit for it. And I will say it again, it is my partner, not me. That, that, that is truly a remarkable thing that for the last 17 years, you didn't have uh, any real financial sponsorship or anything like that. And somehow uh, you, you, you made all this. And, and by the way, we're in the RTN um, uh, studios right now, and we'll show a couple of clips in a second um, of, of the studio. but. Um, Tell me about the show and what, what does a typical uh, Romanian television network show look like? We have a variety of programming. Uh, one of the shows that I uh, produce and I'm uh, directly involved in is called Face to Face. It's a talk show and we're talking about uh, people from different backgrounds, uh, about their life experience, about uh, their success, their failures. And we're trying to learn from, uh, from their uh, own uh, experience and especially people that uh, struggle and they succeed or somehow find solutions and hope through their crisis. Uh, and this is one of the shows and we also have a news uh, program. Uh, we have uh, programs that we uh, take from other producers, independent producers. To broadcast 24-7 doesn't mean you produce uh, all the programming. So you have to acquire some of them. And we acquire uh, different programming uh, from other uh, stations from Romania, uh, plus whatever we can uh, produce locally here in Chicago. So where can uh, somebody view this, uh, these shows? Where, uh, what are your methods of distribution? We are uh, one of the channels on a Romanian network called Glo uh, Global Connect Network that uh, has uh, a total of 24 channels. Mm -hmm. And we are one of those channels on the Global Connect. As well, uh, we broadcast uh, uh, online 24-7. What, what is your audience comprised of? Do you have those statistics? Who's watching the show? We don't have statistics, uh, so we can say specifically we have so many viewers, but we can say that our target audience is uh, the Romanian-speaking population in the United States and Canada, mm -hmm. primarily, which is approximately 2 million and also worldwide about 30 million, including Romania. Now tell me about your aspirations. I mean, this is called aspiring Hollywood. Now, I don't know if you aspire to be in Hollywood or not, but you have your own little Hollywood right here in the studio, where, by the way, and, and show some clips as I'm talking about this, um, you know, you have a set, uh, a, a news desk right there that looks very, very nice and, and professionally done, and, and you've done this all in-house. Can you... Uh, can you talk a little bit about the sets that you have? First of all, I don't have any Hollywood uh, aspiration. I don't visualize myself uh, being in Hollywood except visiting. <laughs> but that doesn't mean that I will reject any, anyone <laughs> interested in, in uh, working with us. I would love to work with uh, the Hollywood community and maybe uh, tap a little bit more into the social and spiritual uh, needs in this uh, 
production of television and movies, which is often neglected because I guess it's not a money maker. But we have to look at the value of uh, well, providing. Well, but let me let me let me stop you right there because you say it's not a money ma maker. But but I know that in the past certain uh, movies that had uh, religious or spiritual, uh, even Christian um, themes, were profitable at the box office. So so we can't totally dismiss that. But you're right. Generally speaking, these type of movies, uh, you know, don't have that big of a box office uh, hit. That's right, uh, and that, that's proof that this, these subjects uh, need uh, also to be uh, taken seriously because they could be also uh, beneficial uh, more than financially, but also uh, spiritually. Right, so tell me about your studio. What, uh, uh, what do you have there? Well, uh, we uh, just finished uh, recently uh, remodeling this studio. It was all done in-house. We... Uh, actually did all the work uh, ourselves. Uh, we have a, a, a news desk, we have a, a, a talk show uh, discussion uh, table, and also we have uh, another set on this side over here, also for talk shows and different uh, uh, programming that is, uh, is needed. Uh, we have uh, everything that we need. It's not a huge studio uh, compared to what maybe Hollywood is used to, but for us, it's exactly what we need. And we feel like we are uh, blessed to, to, to have this uh, opportunity. Now, what, what always amazes me, because every time I come by, you know, I come to Chicago and I come by to see you, uh, and I see that you have improvements, uh, you know, each time, either you have a new camera, you have new lighting, you have new sets, but you never commercialize the studio, which, which I find fascinating. I mean, this could be a good way for you to, to raise some capital so you can keep producing your shows by renting the facility to, to people. Why Talk about that. What, what's going it's, on with It's that? available. We just never knew how to approach uh, the market to make it known. We just didn't take, uh, we were so, we are a very small team. And uh, we are so, f we were so, and we still are so focused on producing whatever we are committed to produce right. that I have to confess the marketing, that the public relations uh, area was neglected. And we didn't have the, 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 the physical time uh, to really uh, go into that particular area. But uh, yes, it, it's got everything it, it needs and uh, an independent right. producer can really do miracles in this studio. Well, and, and you embody the, the true definition of a producer because I've, I've spoken to, to uh, uh, my, my audience in the past about independent film producers, television producers are so passionate about the product, about the theme and, and the subject matter of their production. And they get so involved in the mechanics of producing their show that they never think of an exit strategy. And that is the most important thing, folks. You know, I mean, the exit strategy is what's going to keep you in business, right? So they never think of, well, okay, so I'm going to produce my film or my short, or my, but what am I going to do with it once it's produced, once it's edited? You know, where do I take it? And that is the most important thing. So let me make it official right now, right here on Aspiring Hollywood. I want you to tell the folks, if anybody lives in the Chicagoland area and is in need of, of equipment and uh, editing facilities and studio facilities, this is the man to see, where can they contact you? They can just go to our website, rtnchicago.com, and there is a contact button. They can click on it and they'll find all our information, our address, our phone number, and uh, our email address. They can email us, call us, and uh, we'll welcome them, we'll show them what we have, and uh, we'll make it work. <laughs> you, you'll, you'll give them a special discount if they mention Aspiring Hollywood, right? Correct, exactly. <laughs> Very exactly. good. Very good. Now, any last parting words for, for, uh, for the audience members? Any uh, piece of advice? And again, you know, I just want to qualify this man. He's been doing it for 17 years. He must be doing something right or somebody, like he said, is watching over him. Any, any parting words? The only uh, thing that I would like to emphasize is uh, to really, really uh, check your motivations. When you tap into this industry, don't uh, set uh, high expectations because you'll be disappointed. It's not as easy as, as you may hope or imagine. 
uh, be very, very uh, committed and passionate about your vision, about your project. Stay focused on it. Revisit your motivations. If they're selfish, chances of success are go is going to be diminished tremendously. If there is some kind of a, a motivation that also takes into the account the social, cultural, or other people, or even the benefit of spiritual benefits, chances of success, in my opinion, and this is proof, uh, our situation here is the fact that we try to put others first. And there is a passage in the Bible, and I'd like to quote that if I could, on, on this aspiring <laughs> Hollywood program. <laughs> Seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all the other things will be added unto you. I paraphrased the Bible verse, but it's a simple principle. Care about others first, and you'll see that whatever you need will come along. And, and that is so true, because if you chase the glitz and the glamour and all that, is, is, uh, is not as productive, if at all productive, as it would be if you chase your craft and you try to improve your craft and you have the passion and you just keep on working and, and, and uh, doing the right thing. Well, Peter, thank you so much for sharing those thoughts with, uh, with Aspiring Hollywood. We really appreciate you being on the show. And, and again, it was a thrill to have you. Thanks again. Thank you, Luciano, and all the best to you. Thanks. Thank you for watching Aspiring Hollywood and visit us again for more interesting and unique, if not exciting, information of ways you too can break into the uh, entertainment business. Until next time, I'm Luciano Saber for Aspiring Hollywood.